Hi, this video is a part of a series I'm making in which I talk about the common issues and pitfalls of collecting, ones that I've come across myself, or ones I'm just worried about. I'll go through and try and explain what the issues are, and if anything can be done to fix or prevent it affecting your collection. In this one, I'm going to be talking about batteries. Everyone at some point has probably come across a battery leak, the crusty white residue left behind a battery compartment, the bane of any toy or console collector. Even for someone who knows the plight and is often careful, it's easy to forget that one time and boom, a complete mess. So, what even causes this? Well, in alkaline batteries, as they discharge, the chemistry changes, causing hydrogen gas to be released. Batteries are designed to contain the buildup of gases by incorporating a pressure expanding seal. But sometimes the pressure can get too much, causing the seal or the case to rupture. This is why sometimes you can hear a hiss or a pop as the gas escapes. This causes potassium hydroxide to leak, which is very corrosive. And it's this corroding of the outer shell that causes potassium hydroxide to absorb carbon dioxide in the air, resulting in potassium carbonate to form. This is the crystalline structure you see forming around the battery and growing down into the contacts. This can spread down to the electronics and be extremely damaging. Can it be removed? Well, as I said, if you're using an alkaline battery, then the residue it leaves behind is an alkali, so it's best to neutralize it with an acid. Neutralizing it like this can cause an exothermic reaction to occur, which releases heat. This can also be damaging. So it's best to remove as much of the loose residue as possible. Then, if you can take it apart, it's best to soak the affected pieces in an acid. Probably the easiest acid you can use that may already be in your home is vinegar. Preferably distilled or white vinegar, as it leaves things less malty. Then, after a few minutes, take it out and give it a scrub. If you're lucky, most of it, if not all of it, will be removed. Then clean it with water and give it a good dry. If it's being more stubborn, then it may need a gentle scraping. But caution is advised, as usually these contact pads are just plated, and if the layer is scraped off, they'll become prone to corrosion. Alkali batteries aren't the only enemy of the collector. Lithium ion batteries, the kind you find in most rechargeable items these days, are also prone to a number of issues. You may have seen news stories of exploding batteries on aeroplanes. They can also swell to potentially triple the size. And the last issue that most people have faced is the dwindling amount of charge they can hold, leading to most devices needing to be replaced after a certain amount of time, and eventually making them absolutely useless. I've experienced a lot of these in my own personal collection, luckily not the exploding batteries, but I have the other two. I have some devices that are so depleted they won't even turn on when plugged into an external power source, and others where the batteries are so swelled that it's forced the screen and the back apart because the battery is turned from a thin sheet into a balloon. So what can be done? Well, if it isn't obvious, the best thing to do is to remove the batteries if possible. So if you've got a Game Boy sitting on your shelf with a couple of old batteries in, then finish this video, run home, and take them out. The next obvious thing is never recharge unrechargeable batteries as, well, the batteries don't like it. The next advice I struggle to follow myself when I'm quickly looking for batteries for a controller or a handheld is to never mix batteries. And by that, I mean different batteries of type or age. And technically they're talking from the same packet, but come on, who's ever got enough batteries for a Game Gear? And also, I remember as a kid trying to wedge in a AAA battery with a bit of metal just to get my last few minutes of gameplay. With lithium ion batteries, it's really important never to puncture or damage the actual battery itself, as it can be really dangerous and one of the causes of explosions. And lastly, you have to keep batteries at reasonable temperatures. Extreme cold can actually drain the battery, but it usually doesn't cause permanent damage, whereas extreme heat not only drains it, but can cause permanent damage. It's one of the reasons that lithium ion batteries swell. Although rechargeable batteries fitted in devices you use on a day-to-day -day basis are essential, I mean, imagine putting AAs in your phone every morning. When it moves from a day-to-day -day item to one in your collection, it can become an absolute pain, as a completely discharged battery not only loses the ability to charge again, but it can cause it to swell and expand, damaging the device. So this means that you have to remember to charge them up. And not only that, you have to charge them to 70% as it's best for the battery. 
I mean, that's why most modern phones have the ability to charge to 70% and wait until it thinks you're going to wake up before it charges to the full 100%. So the bigger your collection, the bigger the chore. That's why I'm hoping when my daughter gets a bit older, I can get her to do it in exchange for pocket money. But considering she's one, I think I've got a while to wait. In my experience, I've had my fair share of alkali batteries leak on me, but as of today, I've never even known of a rechargeable one leaking. I mean, it's not to say it can never happen, but I like those odds, so I'm definitely sticking to rechargeable batteries in my devices from now on. It may sound like I have something against battery operated devices, but in fact, they're one of my favorite things to collect for. Not only are they generally smaller, so they're easier to fit in the house, but they're a lot safer to work on, it means I don't have to worry about mains electricity. And especially with devices that run on AA or AAA batteries, is it something amazing about having a device that's potentially 30 years old, and yet I can still go down the shops and buy the same thing to power it as the day it was released. I know there's a huge community at the moment about modding these devices and putting rechargeable batteries in, but for me, I know I'm not going to play them every day. So it's a lot more convenient for me is to leave them on the shelf, not worry about the batteries until I do get a chance to play it. And all I need to do is pop in some double A's and I'm all good to go. Well, I hope there's something in that video that you found helpful. And if you did like it, please like and subscribe. It really helps. And thanks for watching.